Let us now discuss um, an important concept uh, of uh, matrices which are called uh, the eigenvalue and eigenvectors of a matrix. So, let us understand what uh, is meant by an eigenvalue and eigenvectors associated with a matrix. Let us consider a matrix A. We will start with an example to find out given a matrix A, how do you compute uh, its eigenvalue and eigenvectors and look at their properties. Let a given matrix, we will take a very short matrix, small size 1 of size 2 cross 2 and let this be the matrix for which we need to compute the eigenvalue and eigenvectors. And let a vector x which has two components x1 and x2, we have two components here because the matrix is of size 2 cross 2. So, we are talking of a square matrix here in general. Okay. However, if the matrix A is of size n cross n, uh, the vector will be of size n. Okay. So, it will have n components, n will be the dimension of a unit vector. At this point, we will not discuss uh, eigenvalues associated with a non square matrix. So, let us look at how to compute this x. Okay. So, let x be the of course, uh, eigenvector. The question is uh, how many of these x's will be there that depends on some properties of uh, basically it depends on the size of a. We will now take that the number of possible values of the eigenvector or number of eigenvectors x will be dependent on the size of a. Okay. So, let x be the eigenvector associated with with an eigenvalue for the time being we will use a notation lambda to denote an eigenvalue. So, if x is an eigenvector and its associated eigenvalue is lambda, you can write an expression as a x which we can write by substituting these two. Let us do that. This is a simple substitution of A here and then its corresponding eigenvector x1, x2 okay. and this is equal to lambda times x. Okay. So, in some sense we are writing A x equals lambda x. This also can be rewritten in this particular form as a minus lambda i times x by bringing this to the left hand side, this is equal to 0. Okay. So, this is actually called the characteristic equation for uh, the matrix A and this will yield some solutions for different lambdas. Okay. How many solutions I just talked about depending upon the size of uh, the matrix A. So, if the matrix A is of size 2 cross 2 or the size 2 because we are talking about square matrices, we can expect there are two values of lambda, lambda 1 and lambda 2 and also there will be correspondingly two solutions of this vector x. Well, I will change the notation here. to be consistent let us say this is a vector x okay, uh, with these two components. So, a 
although you will get in some books the notation small x written here with a vector sign which indicate it is a vector. So, you can do that as well ok. So, uh, it is all right if you had actually uh, written like this then you had to put a small x with a vector sign, but we will restrict ourselves the capital X which indicates a vector ok. So, I am putting the vector here yes. small x with subscripts x 1 and x 2 are the two components of the vector x ok. So, the question now is given this characteristic equation a minus lambda x i x equal to 0 ok, how many solutions are possible ok and let us try to write this in this particular form ok. So, a minus I am writing this again it is called the characteristic equation or characteristic polynomial. for the matrix A ok. Uh, the degree of the polynomial will be dictated by the size of the A and hence the number of solutions which are possible. Now, depending upon the value of A, the question is how many solutions are possible. Let us take a situation when a minus lambda i this part remember i is an identity matrix we introduced this earlier and lambda is just a scalar value ok. So, if we take this matrix and look at its determinant value okay. if you look at this matrix and look at its determinant value and assume if this is singular that means if this is equal to 0 that means this is singular. What do you think will be the possible solutions for x ok? What do you think will be the possible solutions of x? So, we have an homogeneous system of equations here and we look at uh, the case when the determinant of this matrix is singular and we are trying to find out that under this condition what are the different values of lambda which provide this singularity condition within this matrix which will actually then give this possible values of lambda and using those values of lambda after we substitute it, it here the values of the vector x which satisfy this particular equation will be called the eigenvectors. So, based on this fact that we have to find out solutions for this characteristic equation uh, of the determinant of uh, this uh, term equal to 0, we will substitute this value of a here onto that expression and find out what are the values of lambda which satisfy this constraint. And to do that, if you substitute this is what you will get is this correct if you substitute it here if you take the values of a the elements 2 cross 2 matrix substitute it here this is what you should get and this will in turn give you an equation which is very simple to derive. I leave this as a trivial exercise for you to check that you can write it in terms of these factors ok. What I mean is this particular thing here is going to give this giving us two possible solutions for lambda which are very simply 2 or 3. 
So, why there are two values? Because the size of two cross two. If the size of a is n cross n, you will have n different possible values, uh, eigenvalues, n different possible eigenvalues, and correspondingly, n different eigenvectors. We'll use these two uh, eigenvalues to find out the eigenvectors in this case. But uh, if uh, 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 the size of a is very large, uh, say the 10 cross 10 matrix or even higher in certain cases, which we require uh, uh, a lot in the field of pattern recognition for clustering as well as classification. There are sophisticated algorithms to compute, do what is called an, as an eigenvalue decomposition to find out uh, what are the corresponding eigenvalues and then the corresponding eigenvectors. We will talk of that later on uh, as to what algorithms uh, one can use to actually do an eigenvalue decomposition to get the uh, corresponding eigenvalues and eigenspectron. And I will just name that uh, one such algorithm which is called the singular value decomposition which you can use for large matrices. But this is typical uh, the case, uh, you can actually solve it even if the matrix size is about 3 cross 3, you will get a polynomial of order 3 and you can get 3 different eigenvalues. But let us finish this uh, problem where uh, you have two eigenvalues and using this uh, say you choose the first one which is lambda equal to 2, substitute it here uh, to get the corresponding equation. So, what you are looking at is either a minus lambda x equal to 0 or you can also write a x equals lambda x as given here. I repeat again a x equals lambda x or you can write something like this and this will actually help you uh, to form a, an equation like this a x minus uh, is a well, uh, let, let me let me take this. Okay, fine. So if you substitute lambda here, let me see what do I get. Lambda equals two will give me minus one, one minus two. What is this value? Tell me. Two. Multiplied by say one such value of x, which is given by x one x two is equal to 0. So, uh, uh, using the value of lambda equal to 2 as the eigenvalue, uh, you can substitute in this characteristic equation and get this and you have to uh, find out a, a, a set of values for x1, x2 uh, which will satisfy this constant. Actually, what you will get is uh, uh, the same, same equation if you try to substitute. Uh, and write to uh, write this in the form of linear homogeneous equations. You will get two equations which are both identical and the value of x1 comma x2 which actually satisfies this can be given in this particular case as this. So, this is an eigenvector. Okay. In fact, to be very precise, this can be multiplied with an arbitrary value of k which is any scalar quantity. So, k multiplied by this that means you can replace 1 1 by k a k and k here and uh, all such eigenvectors with uh, uh, with this uh, quantity for all possible values of k will actually give you possible eigenvectors which will satisfy this equation with this particular lambda. Now, we will move to the other eigenvalue lambda equal to 3 and uh, write the characteristic equation there as well. So, if you do that the equation which you will get now is <coughs> this is what you will get as a minus lambda i and multiplied by x is equal to 0. This is again giving you the same, it is very clear that you will get the same equation uh, which will be satisfied by a value of x equals x1, x2 and actually uh, what you are getting from this is the relationship of this form. Okay. What you will get is minus 2x1 plus x2 is equal to 0 which in turn specifies that x1 is equals to uh, x2 by 2. Okay. So, any pair 
of values x1 and x2 which satisfies this uh, will be a possible solution for the eigenvector here. Uh, one such example could be uh, well say 1 or 2 or you can also write this as half and 1, 0.5 and 1 and uh, multiplied by k because for any arbitrary value of k here they will all satisfy this particular equation. So, this is a very simple method where you solve for the eigenvalues and look for the eigenvectors which satisfy this. Next, we will take an example now where the size of the uh, matrix A is, uh, uh, is of size 3, 3 cross 3. So, now we will look at some examples of uh, obtaining eigenvalues and eigenvectors from a matrix of size 3 cross 3, okay, where the dimension is 3. Okay, so, let us take an example. Three cross three matrix, so there are three rows and three columns. Very simple. Earlier we had taken examples of two cross two, so the matrix is minus twenty one, minus nine, twelve, zero six zero, minus twenty four, minus eight, plus fifteen. So we'll straight away look at the characteristic function a minus lambda i which gives okay, that should be it. So, determinant of this matrix, uh, I leave it as an exercise for you that when you write it in this form, uh, you should be able to evaluate. In fact, there will be a dominant diagonal and you should be able to write. I am leaving this as an exercise for you to write it in terms of factors. What is the third factor? lambda plus 9, yeah. you should be able to derive it like this. This gives three corresponding eigenvalues. So, the eigenvalues are, of course, you can ask me a question whether you will get three such distinct factors or three distinct eigenvalues. We will see an example next where you may not get three distinct eigenvalues. The eigenvalues are lambda equals 6, lambda 1 equals 6, sometimes it is called lambda 2 equals 3 and lambda 3 equals minus 9. These are the three corresponding eigenvalues. Okay. So, based on these three eigenvalues, we will now try to obtain the corresponding eigenvectors. So, for each of these corresponding eigenvalues, I need to find out the corresponding eigenvectors. Okay. So, what you need to do? You need to form equations where this is satisfied. Okay. We know the values of lambda. So, you need to find out the corresponding v's which will be satisfied and they are called the eigenvectors, but for this solution of the equations, they will be called the non-trivial solutions, correct. They are called the non-trivial solutions of this homogeneous system of equations. So, let us start with the uh, first eigenvector. Uh, let us say we will choose minus 9 to start with, okay. So, lambda 3 which is equal to minus 9. You can start with lambda 1 also does not matter. So, this will give a plus 9 i what will you get? That means, the a is given here plus 9. So, you can see the diagonal elements will only change, correct. So, that will give you, what will be the first element? Minus 12, minus, 12 plus, minus 21 plus 9 which is minus 12. The rest of the non-diagonal elements will remain the same, is not it? So, this is 0, 
6 plus 9 15 0 minus 24 minus 8 then 15 plus 9 24. Now, you have to find out what value of V uh, this is satisfied. So, the method which is usually adopted, there are a lot of algorithms to find out the corresponding Vs, but what is done is basically you try to reduce this form of A uh, minus lambda I to be, you got a plus because you have a minus here, so, this 2 minus produces a plus 9. Okay? So, you we call this is a row reduce that means you try to operate row wise on this matrix of course, you can operate column wise also and you try to get a row echelon form if you have operate column wise you will get a column echelon form also that is also possible, but here we are talking about row reduce to get to get or to obtain the row echelon form of this matrix. I will leave it an exercise for you to learn this. If you do not know this, what we will do at the end of the course, we will run, uh, 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 run, run one simple example to show given a matrix how to obtain a row column form. The basic idea is that the leading uh, entry of any particular row of non zero rows uh, should be uh, uh, 1 uh, or it can be any other non zero value. All the zero rows will be at the bottom and correspondingly as you go down the position of the starting element of each such non-zero row shifts to the right. Okay. There are certain properties of this row column form. We will see one simple example of trying of the method to reduce a matrix to a row column form or the row reduced form. This is the example. That is all. So, I am I am skipping this derivation here and if you do this row column form this matrix and somebody work out and tell me the values of this row column form. I think you will have a 1 starting here. Okay, then since this then this has to be 0. So, the 1 could start here. this all of the rest could have been zeros also. So, uh, that is also a, a valid row column form. And then you have. So, this is equivalent to saying that this is equivalent to this in some form, this is something like a scalar multiple because uh, 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 um, uh, creating this row reduction form is, is basically multiplying uh, the matrix in which the equivalence uh, is established, the equivalent form exists, and uh, the corresponding eigenvectors have to be found out with correspondingly say that means what I will say is some v 1, v 2, v 3. If these are corresponding components of the eigenvector, this should be equal to 0. Okay. So, actually if you see here, you can exploit the first two rows of this matrix to get one constraint in which you will get from here or maybe should I uh, let right here then. Okay. So, from this I am proceeding here towards this. So, let me write here. So, you can see V1 minus V3 equals 0. So, I will write that. How do you get this? First row multiplied by this. Similarly, second row also you will get this okay, V2 equal to 0. So, uh, the third row does not give us any particular constraint because it is all null. So, based on this uh, you can set a constraint here that let us say V 3 equals some constant C 1 arbitrary real value C 1. Then what you will have is that uh, uh, this will actually also lead to V 1 equals uh, minus C 1 or plus. because v1 equal to v3 is correct okay so you will have something like this okay. 
some books will try to write eigen vectors as rho as in that case they will probably give a transpose okay so that will be this will be one solution this will be one solution corresponding to lambda 1 equals minus 9 okay we started with this value so corresponding to this eigen value so you will have any of these for any arbitrary values of C1 is what you can put here multiplied with this vector will give you the corresponding set of Eigen vectors. And if you apply the same process for the other two Eigen values 6 and 3, okay, uh, we will get two other different solutions for Eigen vectors. So, uh, as I say here, so this solution comes from here lambda 3 equals minus 9 gives the corresponding solution for the first Eigen vector. Okay? So, if you want I can write here as say this sub superscript 1 indicating that this is the first Eigen vector or a third one corresponding to lambda equal to 3. Okay. Now, similarly you the other two Eigen values are lambda 2 equals 6 and lambda 2 equals 3 and lambda 1 equals 6 will give me the solution. So, lambda 1 equals 6 will actually uh, let me look at the solution. this correct? So, that is the final solution. So, these are the corresponding three Eigen values for this matrix and the corresponding Eigen vectors are 1 0 1 actually you can eliminate take C 1 to be equal to 1 okay? uh, and uh, the other two Eigen vectors are given by this corresponding to okay? and these three vectors actually form a basis in the dimension. Okay, we will talk about this basis vector basis and span subspaces a little bit later on, but for the time being just remember that this corresponding uh, 3 Eigen vectors are orthogonal to each other span. Yeah, so, let us take another example of uh, a matrix of size 3 dimension 3 and look at the Eigen values and Eigen vectors whether we get uh, first of all whether uh, we get uh, a unique uh, set of eigenvalues that is more important. So, let us take this example. Let us say uh, Straight away we will go to this which will give us okay, pi minus lambda 0 minus 1 0 h minus lambda 0 minus 3 0 then 7 minus lambda correct. So, that if you take the corresponding matrix the determinant of this matrix and write write in a polynomial form and then factor it you will get I leave this as an exercise for you. You should be able to check it. Okay. Okay. Maybe you should get a somebody, one of my students is pointing out right away that there is a, there should be a negative sign. <coughs> that is what you will get. Okay. So, this gives us a shot of three Eigen values where lambda 1 equals 4, lambda 2 equals lambda 3 equals 8. This is one way of writing the set of Eigen values, three Eigen values. The other way of saying this is that lambda 1 equals 4 is of multiplicity 1 and lambda 2 is with 
equal to 8 is a multiplicity 2 that means it occurs twice okay the two eigen values are same the question comes is how many eigen vectors well you can expect from this now that this will give eigen vector all right and this pair of equal eigen values will give a another pair of eigen vectors so you should get three eigen vectors okay so that's what you should do so let's try the first one a minus 4 lambda a minus 4 i that means what I have done in this expression I have substituted lambda 1 which is equal to 4 okay and if you do so if you look at this expression here what will you get tell me the first row 0 minus 1 that is trivial then 0 8 minus 4 so that is 4 0 minus 3 0 3 this if you row reduce which was left as an exercise and you solve it out and tell me I will wait <coughs> so what is the solution you get first row 1 0 minus 1 last row 0, 0. so what we are looking is that 1 0 minus 1 0 1 0 0 0 0 which is the same as the row reduced form of here with correspondingly v1 v2 v3 the three components of the first aggregator corresponding to lambda 1 equal to 1 this should be equal to 0 okay and this will give a constraint which we had last time what did we have v1 equals v3 or basically you will get v1 minus v3 equals 0 and then v2 equals 0 this is the solution we had in the previous example as well so i am repeating that so you can look back into your notes that means correspondingly for this lambda 1 equals 4 you will get the first eigen vector remember what I am using is subscript indicates the dimension or component of an eigen vector whereas the superscript indicates the corresponding eigen vector for this index is the same as this for the corresponding eigen value okay. So what did we have last time as a solution v1 1 0 1 okay so you can write like this if it is a, a row vector then you can write this is a transpose so this is the first one which is over let us start with the lambda 2 equals lambda 3 equals 8 what is a minus lambda i what is this matrix check it out very easy this will be minus 3 0 minus 1 0 0 0 minus 3 0 minus 1 good reduce this I am writing in short RR indicates row reduce you will get R zeros. I did tell you in the row column form that the uh, leading entry uh, uh, will be a non-zero element uh, in most cases this is considered as one but it can be more than one as well okay <coughs> talking of this so this with that corresponding if you write in this form will actually give you one condition that 3 v1 plus v3 will be equal to 0 with no constraint on v2 with no constraint on v2 <coughs> or in other words you can say that 3 v1 equals minus v3 that means 
you have to now formulate a pair of eigenvectors from this constraint which will satisfy this particular condition. Okay. One of such conditions I am going to give you is the following, V which will be So, this is one way of writing possible solutions for this eigenvectors under the constraint. You look at the condition here 3 V 1 equals minus V 3 okay, which is the first and third dimension. So, that constraint uh, is uh, satisfied here and uh, V 2 there is actually no constraint. So, you, uh, you know, uh, uh, set it to 0 and 1. So, these tuples C 1 C 2 you can choose arbitrary constants and they will give you some combination of two eigenvectors. So, what you basically have now is that the first eigenvalue lambda 1 equals 4 has given you the corresponding eigenvector here. So, this is V 1 and the V 2 and V 3 can be chosen from here. by choosing arbitrary values of C 1, C 2. Okay. So, choose arbitrary values of C 1, C 2. You can choose say 1 and 1 okay, or choose 1 and 2. So, two such combinations will give you two vectors V 2 and V 3 combining with this V 1 will actually give you three such eigenvectors which again spans the three dimensional space. Okay. So, this is a simple example of a situation where you have three eigenvalues and the eigenvectors which you get are uh, non-specific eigenvectors, but you can actually obtain them from arbitrary constants. Let us take is this always the case? Let us take another example of a 3 cross 3 matrix which will again have a multiplicity, but a different result of the eigenvectors and that matrix an example which I am taking now reads as 0 1 3 0 6 0 minus 6 2 9. Why am I taking different examples of dimension 3? We have started with an example of dimension 2 and we got two eigenvalues and two eigenvectors. I am taking different examples of dimension 3 because we are getting three eigenvalues, some of them with more than one multiplicity that means they are duplicated and they are giving rise to uh, three corresponding eigenvectors. These eigenvectors may or may not span the three dimensions. We are going to talk about vector spaces soon immediately after this uh, in which your concepts of vector space, subspace and the span will be clarified. <coughs> so, let us proceed with this and the corresponding A minus lambda i matrix will be minus lambda 1 3 0 6 minus lambda 0 minus 6 2 then 9 minus lambda and we need to take the determinant of this matrix. <coughs> and what you will get is a form I will leave this as an exercise for you. You should probably get this. Just check, are you getting this? Okay, again, you have a multiplicity of 2 in one particular case. We will start with this. So, this will give you lambda 1 equals 3, lambda 2 equals lambda 3 equals 6. Is there a minus sign here? No, does not matter actually. Get this? There is no minus sign here. Fine. Okay. So, let us start with the first eigenvalue which lambda is equal to 3. So, this will give us a minus 3 lambda sorry sorry a minus 3 i what will it that is a. So, you will have minus 3 1 3 then 0 3 0 minus 6 
to 6, correct? We have reduced this. Tell me what you will get. It is basically a row wise operation. Then 0 and all zeros at the bottom. <coughs> so, the corresponding eigenvector should be. 1 0 1 0 minus 1 0 1 0 0 0 0 then of course v 1 v 2 v 3 this is equal to zero. like the process we have been doing earlier find out the eigenvalue substitute into the expression a minus lambda i times e is equal to 0. So, this will again give a constraint v 1 minus v 3 equals 0, v 2 equals 0. This we already had again, it is coming back this constraint okay. and we know the solution by heart now. I think we have done that, that this will give the solution first eigenvector tell me 1 0 1. Okay. We want to put a transpose if we want to represent it as a row vector otherwise you can leave it as a column vector. Okay. So, this is 1 with the corresponding lambda 1 equals 3. So, lambda 1 equals 3 give us this solution here. Let us take the other one. What is the multiplicity here? 6. Lambda 2 equals lambda 3 equals 6. What is the matrix? <coughs> From A here, this is minus 6. 1, 3, 0, 0, 0, minus 6, 2. Is this correct? Row reduce this. So, row reduce this, you will get. Prompt me, tell me. Yeah, this is different from the previous cases, correct? We did not have this form earlier. So, this gives 2 v 1 minus v 3 equals 0 and v 2 equals 0. Okay, the first row will give this and the second row will give this. Okay? So, we can form the corresponding solution straight away here, this is unlike the previous case which will give us what 1 0 2 correct because V 3 equals 2 V 1 and you can multiply this by C 1 if you like, but it does not matter. We do not have V 3, in fact V 3 is also the same as V 2, same eigenvector. Okay? So, this is a case where you can see that this is one eigenvector, this is the second eigenvector and what we have from this eigenvector set is now a subspace in 3 dimension. Okay. These two V 1 and V 2 put together because V 2 will be actually same as the V 3 now because if you substitute lambda 3 equals 6 you are going to have to, this is different from the previous case when we had multiplicity here as well lambda 3 equals 8, if I have kept it on the board, I have not dropped it to show you that if this is equal to 8, then we substituted, got the row reduced form and then we got these constraints. We did not have a constraint for V 2 in the previous example, now we have it here, this constraint from the second row, that was not the case here. So, this free constraint from V 2 forced us to write a solution in this particular form for the eigenvectors which is dependent on two arbitrary constants C 1 and C 2 which satisfy the constraint as given here and that gave us the corresponding to free V 2 V 3 as 
functions of C1, C2 and then we had three eigenvectors that is not the case here in both cases of 6 uh, for this particular matrix example. We got first the solution uh, for 3 we got this eigenvector for the corresponding multiplicity 2 here for the eigenvalues this is the eigenvector we have and this spans. So, here V1 and V2 spans we will say the subspace in 2 dimension we will talk about vector spaces very very soon. 